All right, we got generic fantasy background music that's not copyright claimed. We got me, the boy Hummus, and you got yourself another lore video. I don't know how long this one's gonna be, so let's just get let's just get right into it. The best Warhammer omnibus I have ever read, the most fun I have ever had reading Warhammer Fantasy, uh, both belong to the Thankful and Bone Ripper omnibus. It is so good. It was the the just the best thing I've ever read. I've read other fantasy media a ton. I would really have to rack my brain and figure out if it is the most fun I've ever had reading a book, but it's up there. It's top one or two for sure, and I've been reading ever since I was like six or seven years old. I don't know, man. I've been reading a ton of books. I love this one. It's probably not the best written book uh, in the Warhammer series. I think, honestly, the Sundering Omnibus, the Elven one, is a little better written, like, technically. But the most fun, by far this one, is fucking awesome. So, the quick non-spoilers version. Thankwell and Bone Ripper Omnibus follows Thankwell. Um, he is a villain character from the Gotrek and Felix series, and this is kind of his, like, spin-off show, if, if this was a long-running series. Um, it is all contained in one omnibus. It's what he's doing when he's not fighting with Gotrek and Felix, and he's back in Skaven Blight doing Skaven-y things. It is great. It follows his adventures. It follows three adventures. The adventures of Grey Seer, Temple of the Serpent, and Thankwill's Doom. It's great. Um, 9 or 10 out of 10. Uh, probably 9.5 is, is, is more perfect. I have very, very few issues with it. The stories inside are great. All three of them are well worth your time. They're all amazing. They're all incredible. Um, and the all you need to know coming into these books is the writer... And I'm forgetting his name. C.L. Werner. C.L. Werner uh, huffed a whole bunch of Warpstone mixed with cocaine and just went to town writing a really strange fan fiction. He sent it into Games Workshop by mistake and they said, sure, boom, it's a book. It's, it makes kind of no sense. It's wild. It's awesome. And it's incredible. And if you love Skaven, you should read this book. If you hate Skaven, you should read this book because a lot of Skaven die in it. That's the best I could do for like absolutely no spoilers. So if you want to read this book and you're the kind of person that just cannot hang at all with any sort of spoilers, then you should stop here. But after that, I will keep it as just touching on some of the points to give people who are never going to read it an idea of what happens and talk about my favorite parts in it. But it's just the outlines. Even if you listen to this and I've convinced you that you should go get this book on like Kindle or something and read the ebook version, there is plenty left in the stories that I'm not going to talk about. There's tons to explore and it is still fucking worth the read because it's so good. All right, where to start with this? So this character is hopefully getting to added to Total War Warhammer 3 soon and I need to get you excited about him. Let's fucking go. Thankful is a gray seer. He is a mage. He's not very good at combat. He does have a lot of power, and he has a constant bag of snuff that he snorts. It's made out of warp stone. It gives him some power. He's really addicted to it, but he refuses to admit it. First book is Gracier. Gracier! The whole premise is the Council of Thirteen sends Thankful to go to Under Altdorf. It's the Undercity Under Altdorf, and they want him to find the Worm Stone. What the hell is the Worm Stone? It is a large chunk of warp stone that Clan Pestilence made. And that's all what we know about it at this point. Thankful goes to Under Altdorf with some council guard, and he's like, Ladies and gentlemen of Under Altdorf, the council has sent me. Rewind a little bit. Before Thankful even showed up, all of the, uh, the, the, the leaders of Under Altdorf sat there and said, You know, we're under the biggest human city ever. We're making tons of money. We should be the Council of Thirteen. And everybody in that room said, Yeah! Let's do some insurrections! Yeah! Let's do that! And then Thankful showed up and said, I'm from the government! So they didn't like that. They didn't like that at all. All of them immediately went, How do we fucking kill this guy? <laughs> so they attempt to assass assassinate him a ton of times. He gets a little distracted. Meanwhile, humans... Yeah, there's humans in this story. The humans discover the Wormstone! They find this big fucking rock under the city of Altdorf, and they're like, hey, what's this? And then one of them touches it, and he explodes into maggoty, deathy worms, but they don't know that, so they're like, where'd that guy go? I don't know. Anyway, let's just take this rock home. I think it's weird stone, that thing people snort for a drug. So then they want to sell it on the black market, so then they hide it, and anybody who actually touched it, touches the stone, slowly gets sick, and then their flesh starts turning into maggots and worms, and they just fall apart. They just completely fall apart. 
So that's apparently what the Wormstone does. Cool. Cool. Thankful doesn't know that, and he's supposed to go get it. The Council 13 doesn't know what he did. What he's supposed to be doing here. They, they don't know what it does. They just want it. I don't know how he's going to get it back to him. He's just going to die. But okay. Cool. So Thankful keeps getting almost assassinated. He does not like that whatsoever. So he goes to the market and he gets Bone Ripper. His, like, fifth Bone Ripper at this point. And this Bone Ripper is my favorite. No. Yes. No. Yes. Yes. This Bone Ripper is awesome. It has three arms. Two on one side. One on the other. It has a central single horn coming out of its head, and it is strangely intelligent. Thankful sees it down there. He sees that it hates its handler. He throws its handler down there. It eats its handler alive. It's just like pulling his guts out. Blood is going everywhere. And after a while, the council guard are thinking about running away. They're freaking out. Everybody's freaking out. And Thankful's like, calm down. He goes down to the pit. He smacks it in the face with the staff. And he says, hey, hey. And the bone ripper looks up at him. Blood of its previous master all over its face, its giant claws leering down at him. Thankwell looks up at his face just full of confidence and he's like, stop it. And it does. It does. It just, it just gets in line. Because Thankwell is a badass sometimes. Other times he's a complete coward. Super inconsistent about when he's witch, but that's, that's just, just this book. It's just what's going on. So he's a badass, he's got a bone ripper. It's my favorite bone ripper. It's so smart, it's so cool. And then like, literally a couple minutes later, he's walking through the market, and there's already been multiple people who tried to assassinate him at this point. Um, Cause Lord Skrulk's here, but we don't know that yet, but Lord Skrulk's here, and Lord Skrulk is one of the people trying to kill him. So he's walking through this market, and then a bunch of wolf rats show up, cause now it's Clan Mulder's turn to kill him, cause they want to do an insurrection against the Council of Thirteen, but Thankful's all here like I'm from the government. You remember that part? They don't like that part. So all these wolf rats are running at him, and Bone Ripper just walks up and casually plucks a few out of the air, and he's staring at him like, what are these things? And he tears them apart. Bone Ripper's awesome! Oh, I love Bone Ripper! Anyway, he's super cool. Oh, humans. Okay, I guess we have to talk about the human part of this thing. So, you know those guys that wanted to sell it on surface for drugs? Uh, there's a Batman. There's a lot of Batmans in the Warhammer universe. Alitha Nar is kind of a Batman. Uh, there's a different Batman. Eltharion the Grim is kind of a Batman. Well, this is a human Batman. His name's Jeremiah Scrivener. He's just invented for this, but he's a shadow wizard who's also like a super badass fighter. So he's just kind of like, he's just Batman. And he has a bunch of people around the city. I honestly, for the first half of this book, thought he was a vampire, the way they were talking about him. Because he's like super mysterious and everybody serves him. And he has like mind control over, I don't know. He feels like a bad guy, but he's a good guy. This guy wants to deal with the Wormstone. He knows it's bad. Um... But he doesn't really know why. So he's trying to track down where these guys are keeping it. And uh, there's this giant rat. You know the Brood Horrors in Total Warhammer 2? It's like that, but longer? Yeah, it's more longer than it is bigger. It's longer. And it apparently has been, like, eating little bits of the Wormstone over the years. And it's it somehow has this magical attunement to it, so it knows where it is. And it's constantly trying to track it down. So this weird ass, super long rat that is unrelated to the Skaven somehow. Don't know what that is. It's not a Molder thing. It, it's, it's, it's kind of portrayed as a natural thing. Don't know what the fuck that is. Anyway, super long rat, long boy. I'm gonna call him Ricky. Ricky shows up and, and the Shadow Wizard Jeremiah is like, huh, what do you want, Ricky? And Ricky's like, Wormstone. And he's like, you can talk. The thing says no, I'm just getting through the plot real quick. And then they have a Shadow Man versus Big Scary Rat fight. Boom, boom, ba, ba, ba. Shadow Wizard kills it because it's super dead. And then he walks away, but it's not super dead. Anyway, back to the things we actually care about. So the Council keeps trying to assassinate, not the Council 13, the Council of Under Ulthorff. Keep trying to assassinate Thankful. He's getting really pissed off, so he leaves. And there's some assassins who's Lord Skrulk kind of sent after him, and then the assassins don't want to deal with Lord Skrulk anymore, so they send 15 of their guys to sneak up on him. Now, Lord Skrulk is a mega badass, and just existing, all of the assassins die before they even get to him. Except for one. There's a named character. I forgot his name. I looked it up, I forgot it. Anyway, doesn't matter. Named character gets to Skrulk, and he's like, what is wrong with you? And Skrulk closes his little sensor so the gas stops pouring out, and he's like, you're gonna die from super cancer in like five minutes unless I give you this vial. What do I have to do to get the vial? Kill Thankwell. 
boss. So he gives him the vial, temporarily cures his affliction of super cancer uh, that Skrulk just gave him in the matter of seconds. So Skrulk's kind of a big problem. And then he goes to try to kill Thanquil. That doesn't work, but that guy stays alive. For now. He kind of doesn't do anything. I actually don't know why he's in the story, but he's around. So, Thankful survived all the assassination plots. He goes to the city. He goes to the black market guys. He says, black market guys, I want that big rock. And they go, holy shit, a talking rat. And he's like, oh yeah, Bone Ripper, kill all these guys. Bone Ripper kills some of them. I don't care about the humans in this plot. So let's just, for the sake of convenience, say he kills all of them. He doesn't, but essentially. Bone Ripper kills some. Thankful steals the, the thing. He goes back into Under Altdorf. He's like, I have the thing. Mission accomplished. How do I get it back to the Council of Thirteen? Wait, what am I saying? Fuck the Council of Thirteen! And the last of the Council Guard go, What? Bro, you can't say that. And he goes, Yes, I can! And he kills the last of them. So he's all out of Council Guard now. He has none. He's gonna betray the Council of Thirteen. He's gonna have the Wormstone. He's gonna use it to rule all of Skaven Blight. Um, and his plan is pretty much that meme of Step one, get Wormstone. Step two, dot dot dot. Step three, rule all of Skaven Blight. <laughs> he doesn't really know how to turn one into the other, but he has it, and therefore, he's got it. So it's him, some warlock engineers at this point, because I don't know, reasons? He just, he keeps threatening to kill them if they leave. They're not really here because they want to be here, and Bone Ripper. Bone Ripper's the only one who wants to be here. They hold up in a human house while Thankful makes a plan. And then, Longboy comes back. Ricky. Ricky's here, and he's like, Hey guys, I got done fighting the Shadow Mage, and I want that big rock! Well, Thankful runs away from him. Ricky chases him around. Thankful runs away from him. Ricky chases him around. Thankful's like, Bone Ripper, for the love of God! And Bone Ripper's like, okay, finally. Stands up, beats the shit out of Ricky. And he's like, sick. And then he snaps Ricky's spine. He's like, all right, Ricky can't move. Cool. And then Ricky moves a bunch. And Bone Ripper's like, seriously? And stabs him through the brain. Ricky's dead as hell. And Bone Ripper's like, sick. <laughs> so, an impaled... Missing part of his head, back broken Ricky, is left in the house. As Bone Ripper goes over to Thankful, he's like, what's the plan with the Wormstone? And Thankful's like, I blew it up! And everyone in the room is like, why? And Thankful's like, because I turned it into juice. Why did you turn it into juice? Because I know how to use it. What we're going to do is we're going to pour the worms, the Wormstone in the juice into the reservoir beneath under Al beneath Altdorf. Altdorf gets its water from there. Under Altdorf gets its water from there. Everybody turns into worms. Everybody dies. I go back to the Council of Thirteen. Dot, 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 I profit. Now me, a sane human being, looks at Thankful and says, The Council of Thirteen wanted the rock. They didn't want you to kill Under Altdorf. And Thankful says, Fuck you, reader. I do what I want. So it cuts back to Skrulk. Skrulk doesn't even know that the rock he is here for, he wants the Wormstone. He's trying to kill Thankful because Thankful was after the Wormstone that he was after. You now know that it's already gone. So Skrulk has nothing, but the Wormstone was like an old clan pestilence thing, so he wants it. He brought two rat ogres, Pox and Nox, and I'm sure they're going to kick the shit out of Bone Ripper because there's two of them and only one of him, and Bone Ripper's not the goddamn best. So Skrulk learns of this plan because that assassin from earlier overheard Skrulk talking about it, and he said, hey, bro, Skrulk's gonna go poison everything, and Skrulk's like, HE WHAT?! THAT'S MY JOB! So they all go down there, and then Batman on the surface is like, HE WHAT?! THAT'S MY JOB! And he goes down there, and that's definitely not what he said, but you get the point, everybody's going to this underground reservoir to poison the water. Except for the Batman guy who wants to stop them from doing that, but he's shit at everything, so I don't think it's gonna work. So they get down there. <sighs> they get down there, and then... Skrulk doesn't know how to get there, and then Ricky shows up, and Ricky is still crawling with only his two front legs, and a hole in his head, and a broken spine, and he fought a shadow wizard previously, because Ricky won't die, and Skrulk goes, follow that thing, they follow that thing, Ricky shows up, Ricky fucking dies again. This time, I think the humans kill him, I think they shoot the shit out of him, I forget, it's been a while, Ricky dies at last. Okay, cool, cool. We get to the reservoir. Everybody's there. So, Bone Ripper has fought Ricky twice. Because Bone Ripper's who kills him in the reservoir. So actually he fought him a third time. Ricky shows up, Bone Ripper's just like, anyway, and kills it. So Bone Ripper fights Ricky a third time. Then, a whole bunch of humans show up and shoot him in the face. They shoot him with pistols and crossbows and stuff. He doesn't like that. 
Thankful's like, Bone Ripper, you're really the only fighter I got, so please kill all of them. And Bone Ripper tries. He kills a lot of them. And then Shadow Batman wraps him in some shadow chains and says, I'll take this one. And Bone Ripper's like, please let me move. I have a lot of things to do. Skrulk and all of his boys show up. And Skrulk says, kill everybody. And everybody starts getting killed. And then Bone Ripper's like, I have shit to do, man. Breaks out of the, the, the Shadow Wizards thing. Runs over to defend Thankwill from all the Plague Monks. Just like all the Plague Monks. All the Plague Monks ever. There's like 30 of them. They pile up on him. They're stabbing a bunch. So he's now been attacked by a Shadow Wizard. Ricky three times. Shot a ton. And he's getting stabbed a bunch by Plague Monks and their poisonous little blades. He's bleeding a lot. He's very, very injured. But he kills all of them because Bone Ripper's the goddamn best. He kills all of them. Sweeps most of them into the reservoir. He's chilling. He's big. He's huge. Then Pox and Ox come out. You finally get to meet them. They're two Plague Ogres, which are rat ogres, but like poisoned as hell. They're drooling, whatever. They surround him, they do some cool stuff, they get in a fight, you're left thinking Bone Ripper's gonna die, but you know he's not because he's a goddamn badass. Anyway, he's fighting two rat ogres at once because he is a goddamn badass. Skrulk gets up to Thankful, says, hey, give me the juice. Thankful says, no, this is my juice, get your own. They fight for a bit. He's losing, uh, Thankful's losing pretty freaking bad. And then the Shadow Wizard shows up to fight Thankful, not Thankful, to th fight Skrulk as well. So they're both fighting Skrulk and they're both losing pretty fucking bad. And then Bone Ripper shows up to fight uh, the Skrulk. And Thankful's like, please, Big Daddy Bone Ripper, save me. Big Daddy Bone Ripper tries. Skrulk points at him and he turns into mush. Like it is horrible and it is so graphic that if I say it out loud on YouTube, this video will get taken down and my channel will be shut down. But like horrible things happen to Bone Ripper in the blink of an eye that made me weep. I cried so hard because I loved that Bone Ripper and he had such a bad way to go. Like good writing, but like I would never want to die that way. It was so terrible. And if you saw my tier list on Skaven Lords, read what happens to this Bone Ripper and tell me I was wrong about Skrulk. Okay, this is terrifying. Anyway, Skrulk turns back around. He's like, okay, where were we? And Thankful says, up yours. Middle finger throws the Wormstone potion into the reservoir and teleports out of there. And the smoke residue behind him is also a middle finger. The shadow magic guy goes, got it. Blows up some C4 that he hid, apparently. Blows up the reservoir. All the water goes off into nowhere. Skrulk's Wormstone and Thankful's plot, both defeated in the blink of an eye, and Altdorf, no water for you. Hope you like being thirsty. So everybody wins! Everybody wins. Except for anybody. Everybody lost. <laughs> Book two, Temple of the Serpent. Gracier is actually the least good of the three. Yeah. 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 All right, book two, best start of any of the books. So after fucking off from under Altdorf, Thankul returned with nothing. So the council's pissed at him and they're looking for him and he's hiding. He buys a Bone Ripper. This one's just a rat ogre. He's, he's neat, he's cool. He buys a Bone Ripper, he hides out in a tiny apartment. So this apartment is, is small enough that like the Bone Ripper has to hunch over and he can't like move very much. Um, we can move, but he can't stand up straight. There's a knock at the door. Thankful says, fuck off. The door opens and Deathmaster Snitch just walks in. We're like 20 pages into this book and Deathmaster Snitch just walks in. He's like, what up, Bala? And Thankful goes, ah, fuck, Bone Ripper, kill him. And Thankful does like the super cool ninja flip. He beheads Bone Ripper, like instantly looks into his eyes and he says like, I don't know, Rosebud or something. And then when Bone Ripper falls dead, Thankful's like, well, that's it. That's the end of me. Deathmaster Snitch waddles over and he's like, I just wanted to get dinner with you. And Thankful was like, shit, bro, that's all you had to say. They high five like gangsters and go out to have dinner. That happens. That's a real thing that happened in this book. Have I told you how incredible these books are yet? Cause they're fucking awesome. Anyway, these two ballers go out to get dinner with Night Lord Sneak, the ruler of Clan Eshin, because why the fuck not? And they're all just sitting there having a grand old time, legitimately just having a grand time. Night Lord Sneak says, hey man, I know the council hates you right now. I got a job for you that'll send you really far away from all of them. And Thankful says, is like, sounds cool. Where is it? Lustria. And if you don't go, I'll kill you. And Thankful goes, sick. Not really, I want to run away. Anyway, 
the basic part is Clan Pestilence, super powerful, super scary. Uh, Clan Eshin wants to get in bed with them. Uh, not literally. No one would want to get in bed with that. Literally. So Clan Eshin is going to go to Lustria and murder the Prophet of Sotek. Because they know that Clan Pestilence has been fighting Sotek forever. And Night, and Night Lord Sneak's pretty much like, Eh, this one's on us. We'll do you a freebie. You'll do you a solid. Maybe you do business with us in the future. So Tanquil's on board with this plan because he doesn't want to die. He's like, what do you need me for? And Night Lord Sneak essentially explains to him that they need a sorcerer of some kind to deal with Sotek's magics. So he's going to accompany a master assassin on this trip. Uh, master assassin's some guy. It's not Death Master Stitch. And we don't care about him. Cool? Cool. The Skaven steal a boat and they go pirating for a bit. Hooray! They get to Lustria. Now you might have noticed... I have not mentioned a new Bone Ripper since the one died in 10 minutes into the book. Well, that's because there's an Eshin sorcerer that has a Rat Ogre, and it's an Eshin Rat Ogre. And this is such a cool thing that I really need it to be an option. I've talked about this on stream. In Warhammer 3, Thankful comes out. He has to, has to have a mount or a companion, like Gobla is a companion to Skarsnik. He has to have a mount or companion of a Bone Ripper and then you can have that drop down menu and you can pay more for the different variants, like the variant I just mentioned in Gracier, like give him higher weapon strength and better leadership and melee defense because that Bone Ripper was a goddamn badass. Anyway, and then you need the Eshin variant. The Eshin variant has fucking Wolverine claws with poison on them, which is awesome. Like Wolverine, X-Men's Wolverine. They're like coming out of his like wrists, like they're gloves that he wears. They're not actually in his flesh, but they're awesome. He can sneak. He is silent when he walks around because he has little boots. Because he has little fucking boots. So you give him stock. Oh, so cool. Anyway, his name is Goji, I think. Yeah, it's Goji. So his name's Goji. This, the Eshin have trained a rat ogre to be an assassin. Like, yes, yes. Have I told you these books are awesome yet? The rat ogre's an assassin. It's awesome. Anyway. So Goji likes his Eshin Sorcerer. Eshin Sorcerer is a dick to Goji all the time. And Grace, your thankful several times helps Goji out a little bit. Whereas um, when the Eshin Sorcerer is in trouble, his reaction is, Goji, save me. I'm so scared. And then at one point, Goji's getting kind of fucked up by some lizardmen. And Thankwill blasts lightning all over him to save him. And then he's like, God damn it, dude. Pick yourself up. You call yourself a sorcerer? Jesus Christ. And walks away. And Goji starts to get some ideas. So, later, uh, the Master Assassin that I forgot his name, doesn't matter, he's dead. The, the Skaven Assault on Lizard Ben goes horribly, <laughs> like, horribly. They get mega fucked. So they're back in the jungle, their leader's dead, Thankful and the Sorcerer are both having a, having a, a, a fight. Um, not like a physical fight, but like a verbal fight about who will lead this, this expedition now. And Thankful goes, well, you're a little bitch, you can't even do much magic, and if I am leader of this tribe, I think any rat ogres with giant metal claws should get a lot of food. And then the other one goes, yeah, well, I should be leader because when I'm leader, any rat ogres with giant metal claws are going to get thwapped in the nose a bunch and not get any food. So then Goji murders the shit out of that little guy and goes over to Thankful and he's like, hey, you're the best guy now. Obviously, he doesn't say that because he's a rat ogre, but still, he's like, yeah. Thankful time! Thankful and Goji! And he renames Goji Bone Ripper, and there we are! This Bone Ripper's a ninja! And then the humans in the plot. You know King Kong? It's King Kong. Kinda. Oh, we're on a boat, and we're humans, and we're on a boat. We crashed in this strange land. What's going on here? Maybe there's money around. Let's go look for money in the jungle! There's not money in the jungle! There's dinosaurs! It's King Kong. It's just King Kong. So the King Kong crew end up at the Temple of Sotek, where the Skaven just got absolutely fucking bodied. And the Skaven see them go in there. And what had happened to the Skaven was when they crossed a certain threshold, all the lizards woke up, ran over, and beat the shit out of them. When the humans showed up, that didn't happen. And Thankwill rubs his little face and he goes, Huh, those giant rat signs didn't light up. Hey, Skaven Slave, walk over that. And when a Skaven Slave walks over there, the giant rat sign lights up, and all the lizards show up and kill them all. And they go, huh. Huh. These lizard men know when Skaven show up. Huh. It's almost like they've been fighting us for thousands of years. 
So Thankful goes over to the King Kong crew and they go, Hey, kid, we have a boat. We came here on a boat. We can take you home. If you go into that temple and you find a big red lizard and you bring him to me, kinda. So there's, there's a bit of humming and hawing. It's too complicated to go into details, but essentially they want the humans to go in there, disable all the security systems so the Skaven can run in and kill the Prophet of Sotek and get the fuck out. The humans say, yeah, and they try to do that. They do that poorly. A bunch of shenanigans go down. Eventually, Gracie or Thankful sitting there like, wow, this all went to shit so fast. And then the Prophet of Sotek says, hey, I'm going to sacrifice those humans. And one of the humans says, don't do that, and shoots him. And Thankful shrugs, mission accomplished, I guess. Everything I did went really poorly, but one of the human, humans got a lucky shot on the Prophet of Sotek's face. And the rest of the Lizardmen were so confused by what was going on, they just let it happen. So Thankful fucks off. He runs away. Um, a Slan woke up and went, huh, that bitch-ass Prophet of Sotek died. We don't like him because he worships not the old ones. Mega cool, but also they're a Skaven, aren't they? Woo! So the Slan wakes up and goes, woo, through the forest. That's my floating sound. It's the sound that I make when I float. Floats through the forest, finds Thankwell and Goji, and goes, that's not what I'm after. You deal with it. Woo, and rides away. High chieftain of their tribe, a source old blood on a Carnosaur, goes to fight Goji and Thankwell. And then you get like three pages of Thankful and a ninja wolverine bone ripper rat ogre ninja fighting a T-Rex with their bare hands. With their bare hands. It is like a cutaway pow and a cutaway bop away from like a weird superhero thing from the 80s. It's awesome. It's epic. It's great. And in the end, Goji does like this super cool like sliding slice move to cut out one of the, 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 the T-Rex's like throat area. And Thankful opens up an earthquake, so there's a fissure that thing kind of falls into, and they kill the source, and it's awesome! It's awesome! These books are great! Anyway, so not knowing where the salon is or what's going on, Thankful and Goji run back to the boat. They're like, hell yeah, we got in a boat, but they got in a rowboat, not the big boat, because they didn't have people to do the big boat, and I also think the other Eshin guys took it at that point. So Goji and Thankful are stuck in a boat. They look at each other and they're like, it's going to be a long trip. And one of us is going to get hungry. So Thankful zaps him in his brain and Goji dies. I cried again. <laughs> I cried a lot. <laughs> Goji fucking dies. <laughs> and Thankful eats his body over the course of the next two months while he sails back to the old world. Also, the Slan, what was he after? He found the human that sh shot the prophet of Sotek and he's like, why'd you do it? And the human's like, because of love. And you wish I was joking, but I'm not. He loved the lady that this prophet of Sotek was about to kill, so he popped a shot and got him. The salon says, good enough, and leaves. Cool. Book three. Thankful's Doom. Book starts out, Thankful's a pirate for a bit. After living off of Rat Ogre for two months, he shows up at this Skaven thing in Nostalia. He finds some pirate Skaven. He kills their captain. He's like, I'm the captain now. And there's a very short bit of Thankful being a pirate. It's it, it's just one Pirates of the Caribbean montage real quick, then it's done. Cool. That'll never come up again. Oh, but it will. There's a dwarf hold. They made it up for this one. They want it to be one and done. It's called Carrick and Cool. It's a dwarf hold. Uh, Ricket Snapfang is a Clan Moors warlord beneath it. And he is trying to take it. He throws some Skaven slaves at it. The dwarves kill all the Skaven slaves. He goes, this is not gonna work. He pays a bunch of money to Clan Scryer to help them uh, in their colony called Bone Stash. He hires some Scryer mercenaries. What does that have to do with Thankwell? I don't know. So, Thankwell gets approached by a Warlock Engineer. The Warlock Engineer says, hey man, I got a bunch of money to go help Bone Stash. You wanna go help us fight in Bone Stash? Thankful shrugs and agrees because he's broke. The council hates him. Everybody hates him and no one knows he's even still alive. Oh, by the way, Deathmaster Schnick showed back up for a little bit. He said, hey, Thankful, good job on the mission. You succeeded. But due to political reasons outside your control, we don't want to be friends with Clan Pestilence anymore. So we don't want anybody to know that we killed that guy. So don't say anything. <laughs> don't, don't say anything. Just... If you acknowledge that you did something for us, I will find you and I will gut you. 
And then Tank was like, that's cool, boss. So about my payment, he's like, if we pay you, that means you did something and people will ask what you did. Now, what are you supposed to not do? Answer me. And Tank goes, tell people I did stuff. Yes, tell people you did stuff. So why would I pay you when I want you to shut your fucking mouth? And Tank was like, I'm super sorry. And it's, it's just, just you better. And he leaves. So Tank was broke. Everybody he knows hates him. It sucks. Warlock Engineer comes up and said, Hey man, I need a mage to help me fight in Bone Stash. And Thankful goes, fine. So he walks with this guy for like a sum total of five pages before Ikit Claw shows up, blows that guy's brains out and says, Who the fuck are you? And yeah, <laughs> that's about that. So some little follow-up is technically Thankful's not here entirely on his own. Uh, the Council of Thirteen, Gracier representative, did show up to Thankful, did talk to him, and said, Hey, I have a job for you. Uh, go with this Gracier, Scryquel. Go to Bone Stash with your Warlock Engineer friend. I don't really care what you're doing in there with him. You're going to be on a mission for me. So Thankful has two missions. And the mission for me is I want you to find the the this artifact that Scryquel knows about. But you're his cover. So Scryquel is going to pretend to be a doddering idiot. And he's your servant, but in reality, he knows what's going on, and you're a daughter in idiot. Got it? Got it. Anyway, so Thankful's in this this thing, and he and the Gracie are here, and Ica Kloss is who the fuck are you, and why are you here with my army? G Thankful stops him, and he's like, dude, legitimately, from the bottom of my heart, my brother in Christmas, I have no idea what you're talking about. This guy, points at the dead guy, hired me to help Bone Stash. And Nick at Claw kicks that guy, and he's like, that guy stole my army, and he needed you to replace me, because he doesn't know shit about magic. And Thankful went, got it, my bad. Didn't know what's going on, I'll be on my way. And Nick goes, cool. And they take two steps, and they're going the same direction. And Ickit's like, where are you going? I'm going to Bone Stash. No, we established this. That guy kicks the dead body. Stole my army and hired you with my money. You're done. And Thankful goes, yeah, I have an unrelated thing at Bone Stash without you. Ikit looks at him, Thankful looks at him, and Ikit goes, whatever. And they walk together apart, together apart to Bone Stash. Cool? Cool. Back at Bone Stash, Rick and Snapfang's having a hard time with automated Gatling gun turrets. Yeah! Yeah! That's how little we give a fuck in this book. The dwarves have Gatling gun auto turrets now. Human boy, do you mean that there's a dwarf behind the Gatling gun hitting the, th hitting the thing and it's automatically firing? No, there's no dwarf around. It's, it's, a, it's an AI powered Gatling gun turret. Yeah. That's the kind of book you're reading right now. So R Rick and Snapfang's having problems with that. Ick and Claw shows up. He's like, Ick, do something about this. Nick goes, no, and runs away. Don't know why. Don't know why he runs away. Rick doesn't know why, but Rick assumes Thankful's with him, so Rick goes, Hey, Thankful, you're with Ikit. Do something. And Thankful's like, Man, how many times do I have to keep telling people I'm not with that guy? And Rick says, Listen here, I'm gonna make this real simple for you. I'm gonna stab you in your fucking knees if you don't shut down this gun somehow. And Thankful's like, Fine, Bone Ripper, go fight the things. Bone Ripper goes and fights the things. Human boy, you didn't mention a Bone Ripper. I know. I left it for comedic surprise right now. Bone Ripper shows up, and he gets shot in the chest by the Gatling gun a bunch of times. It's like so many times. And Thankful walks up behind him while he's getting shot by the Gatling gun, and he casts a spell and he blows up the thing, and Ricky can move forward, and Thankful can get on with his mission. So, what you may ask? Why didn't you mention? The Bone Ripper. I'm out of breath. One second. Gotta drink some of that. Gotta drink some. Why didn't you mention the Bone Ripper? Is it because it just died? No, it's entirely made out of metal. What? Yeah. Yeah, he's, it's, yeah. The payment to Thankful, the payment the Warlock Engineer gave him, he stole like a Claw's Rat Ogre. So it's not a Rat Ogre anymore, it's the, it's the carcass of Thankful's original Bone Ripper before the Thankful and, and Bone Ripper Omnibus. It's the first Bone Ripper that fought Gothric and died. They took that thing's bones, 
covered him in metal, hooked it up with wires, and made it a robot that obeys voice command. So the dwarves have AI-powered automatic Gatling guns. And the Skaven in this book have AI-powered voice command giant robot rat ogres with flamethrower arms. That's the book you're reading now. You have to accept that. At this point, you're like 600 pages, balls deep in the best thing you've ever read, and there's no turning back now. You have to see how it ends. So Robo Rat Ogre and Thankful go there. We cleared out your stupid guns. Ricket Snap Bang says, sweet, thanks boss. Charges into the dwar Dwarven Stronghold. Thankful goes on his way. Cool. Ica Claw, he fucked off because he's stealing the Dwarven Metal for something. You don't know what yet, but you know he's stealing metal. Thankful doesn't care. So Ricket wants to take the fort uh, for Clan Morris, like he was supposed to, like he hired Scryer to do. Scryer took his money, used some of it to build a giant robo rat ogre and gave that to Thankful to betray Ica Claw. Thankful didn't betray Ica Claw. Ica Claw betrayed Clan Rick, Ricket Snapfang and Clan Morris. Did I mention this is Clan Morris? Which that'll be important later, but this is a Clan Morris settlement. It could betray him to steal Dwarven Metal to build something. You don't know what it is, but something. In the the whole time, this game would have gotten no closer to taking this Dwarven Hold, okay? So, Thankful, Scrakel, Thankful, Scrakel, the two Grey Seers, and Giant Robo Roger, try and go find what Scrakel's after. Thankful doesn't know what it is. Scrakel knows what it is. They find it. Yeah, they find this old Skaven burrow that was shut off and surrounded and killed. So what is it? It's... The Hand of Vikteek. And apparently Vikteek was an old Skaven Cran Lictus... Cran... Cl cl cran... Stroke? I'm having a stroke. Clan Rictus Warlord that almost enslaved the entire Empire of Man back in the day. And I guess after he died they cut off his hand and for some reason now it's a magical amulet. I don't know. He had no magic in his veins. He was not a magical guy. Don't know why it's magical amulet. That's what the Grey Seers are after. And as soon as Scrakel grabs it, he's like, this shit's boss. And then his eyes get all dilated and he goes completely insane, tries to kill Thankful. Thankful doesn't have any of that nonsense and Robo, Robo Roger, uh, Robo Rat Ogre Bone Ripper uh, smashes his, his stupid little brain in. Okay. The Grey Seer we didn't care about is dead. Thankful now has the hand of Vikteek and he's like, I should not use this because it turns people insane. Weird how it turns people insane. Is that setting up for something? Why, oh why, would it send magic users insane when they touched it when it's the hand of a warlord, not a magic user? What? Is there somebody... I'm thinking here, is there somebody that really enjoys warriors, warlords, blood, and violence, and the skulls they reap, and hates mages. I can't think of anybody who fits that description. Put that away for later. So, Thankwell returns with Robo Red Ogre, and he goes, I have the hand of Vikteek, and all the other Skaven are like, cool, we didn't really ask for that. The Clan Moors Warlord is like, Thankful, what the fuck is the Hand of Vikteek gonna do? And Thankful's like, stuff, where's Ikit? And, and Ricket says, that's also a problem, because you need to talk to Ikit. So Thankful shows up, and he's like, I have a hand, and Ikit's like, I have a Doom Sphere. <laughs> and Thankful goes, oh, what? Isn't that the nuclear bomb you built previously? And Ikit goes, yeah! So there's a Robo Rat Ogre, automatic Gatling cannons, and a nuclear fucking warhead in a fantasy book, and I'm here for it. This is the type of book you're reading. You're 730 pages into it now. You can't stop. You have to finish it. So Ikit Claw's like, I have a nuclear bomb. Ah, I'm gonna blow up everything up. And, and Thank was like, bro, why? That, why? I want it. <laughs> I want that. That's mine now. Because, as Thankful does, he's gonna steal nuclear bomb, dot, 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 profit. Doesn't know how, doesn't know how he's gonna profit, but he's gonna. So he says, listen, Nick, and I have the hand of Vikteek. I can use it to blow your little brains out somehow. Definitely gonna do that. And uh, you should give me your nuclear bomb so I can rule the world. And Nick Claw goes, I have a pistol. It could blow your stupid brains out. And I have a nuclear bomb. And I'm gonna rule the world. And then a dwarven army shows up and says, 
We don't really know what's going on here, but we have a nuclear bomb, and we don't want it to blow up our hold. So you give us that nuclear bomb, or we're gonna kill you. All the Skaven go, oh shit! So Ikit tries to kill Thankwell. Thankwell tries to kill Ikit. Robo Rat Ogre fights all the dwarves. The dwarves fight all the Skaven in the room. Everything's going completely insane. And then at one point during the fight, Ikit Claw's like, fuck this shit, and pulls the thing. He's gonna blow up the Doom Sphere and everybody with him. And he's just doing his crazy Ikit Claw laugh. He's having the best time of his life. And then it doesn't work. It shuts down because Ikit Claw built it wrong. And he goes, fuck, and runs away. And he's like, I hate this place. I hate you, mom. You don't own me. I'm going back to my room. And he puts on the do not disturb sign. So he leaves. Thankful runs away, and Robo Rat Ogre dies in a pile of dwarves while strangling one to death, its robotic hands squeezing the life out of him as its power shuts down because Thankful left it. Actually, yeah, it didn't even die. Thankful just left it there so it had no more commands, so it strangled him to death and then just stood there for all time. And then the dwarves ended up burying it. All right, so the nuclear bomb didn't go off. The nuclear bomb didn't go off. The Skaven didn't manage to take the dwarf hold. So Clan Moors paid, let's let's just do a summary here. Clan Moors paid Clan Scryer to come help them take this fort. Clan Scryer took their money and said, no, fuck you. Instead took all their Skaven slaves and resources to build a nuclear bomb, which they didn't even use and it didn't work. And then Clan Moors is now out a bunch of money and all of the settlement of Bonestash because Ikka Claw actually ended up leading the dwarves down there to clear out Bonestash. So Moors is out money and out of settlement. Ricket Snapfang runs away, and Thankful is stuck running for his life from the dwarves. He eventually escapes the dwarves, he gets back on the highway to Skaven Blight, and he's like, I'm gonna go back with the hand of Vikteek, this hand I have, and I'm gonna talk to the Grace Seer guy who hired me, part of the Council of Thirteen. I'm gonna demand a raise. Story's over. Why are there 30 pages left? So Thankful walking back to um, Skaven Blight, 30 pages from the end of the book. Sca uh, Thankful's walking, and he, he sees someone approaching him. 30 pages from the end of the book. And he sees, he's like, hello there! I'm Gracie of Thankful. I would, I would, I'm, going, I'm commandeering your army, because you cannot possibly be more important than me. We are 30 pages from the end of the book, and Queek Headtaker walks out of the shadows and gets real low and looks him in the eyes, because Queek's way taller than him, and he's like... You sure about that? And I say, it's 30 pages from the end of the book and Queek just showed up. Now, what's get, the book's over. The story's over. And Queek says, the story's not over as long as I'm alive, bitch. Where's my city? And he holds up the head of Ricket Snapfang, the previous Clan Moors guy who was here. And Thankful's like, I need an explanation. And the audience is like, I need an explanation too. And Queek gives him the short version. He says, Clan, uh, Lord Nodwell wants to know where all the money went. He wants to know where Bone Stash went. And he wants to know why this crying bitch came home asking for more help. Because I thought that's what the money was for. And Thankful gives him the short version and says, If Claw stole your money, it's not my fault. I have the hand of Vikteek. And Queek doesn't give a shit about that. So Queek picks him up and throws him at him. He's like, we're gonna go kill some dwarves like Ricket was supposed to. So Clan Moors ended up getting more help from Clan Moors, which makes me wonder, why did they hire Scryer in the first place? But whatever. So Queek and his boys roll up at the Dwarven Stronghold, which, by the way, their army is still in the basement. They're in Bone Stash. They're not there. So Queek rolls up on a town without an army and he starts just wrecking up the place because he's awesome. Then the dwarves show up and he's wrecking up the place because he's even more awesome. And after a while, Queek, they're winning. They're doing great. They're doing awesome. Queek's having a great time. Clanmore's having a great time. And Queek walks over to Thankful and he's like, you ain't doing nothing. You're a dumb piece of shit. Tell me why I shouldn't kill you because I hate Grace Sears a lot. And Thankful's like, I have the hand of Veek Teeth. And Queek and the audience for the 50th time are like, who the fuck cares? And Thankful's like, oh, I'll make you care. So he reaches deep into the hand of Veek Teeth and he's like, I summon you, um... Dingleus Fuckington, whatever that guy's name was, Vikteek. I It's his hand, of course I should know that. He, he tries to summon Vikteek's essence to get this, like, ancient vermin lord um, to come out of the hand and, like, talk some sense into Queek and, like, reestablish Thankful's dominance so Thankful can turn the ship around because, oh, I didn't mention because I'm too excited. Thankful wanted to take the Dwarven City, like most Skaven, where you take slaves and prisoners to sell to other Skaven 
you know, like dwarven prisoners are super valuable, take their gold, take their food and stuff. Queek's just burning it to the ground, and all the prisoners he they get, the Clan Moors guys kills because Queek's insane. So Thankul's trying to turn this more into a raiding mission while Queek is just burning it to the ground. The dwarven army shows up and Queek gets a little busy, so he ignores Thankul for a bit. Thankul reaches in to try and get Viktik to come out and show him who's boss, and Viktik sounds kind of strange. Viktik kind of sounds like a greater demon of corn, and like 15 pages from the end of the book, Scarbrand walks in. Yeah! Yeah! 30 pages from the end of the book, Queek wasn't even the last legendary lord to show up. So Scarbrand walks up because Thankful summoned him, and Thankful's like, oh shit, get back in the hand. And Scarbrand goes, nah, because it turns out the last Skaven who had Viktik's hand said, this thing sucks. Everybody who holds it sucks. I hate everybody. So he carved a symbol of corn into this guy's hand that nobody knew because the Skaven aren't particularly bright all the time. So Thankful didn't even know what it was. So he summons Scarbrand. Scarbrand's like, I'm gonna kill you. And Thankful goes, please, daddy, no. <laughs> so all the dwarves go into a blood frenzy and they're killing other dwarves. All the Skaven go into blood frenzy. They're killing other Skaven. Everybody around Scarbrand is just in a complete orgy of murder. They're all killing each other. Thankful's running for his life. Queek goes, uh, okay, yeah, you're a powerful Gracier. You summoned a big thing. Put him back. And Thankful's like, I don't know how. So Queek runs away. Everybody who isn't insane runs away. All the dwarves try to defend their home as the last remaining Skaven kill themselves into an oblivion besides the ones who ran away with Queek. So Queek's gone. Scarbrand's still chasing Thankful. They don't know what to do. And one of the dwarves is a named character that I haven't even mentioned because it doesn't matter. Climbs up to the top of this giant statue of a dwarf holding a hammer, and he places some blasting charges down to get the hand to sever at the right time, and then the giant statue with the giant thing lands on Scarbrand's head, and it banishes him back to the realm because he took way too much damage in too short of a time. So, that's that. Now they killed Scarbrand. Why did they kill Scarbrand? The story was over. The story was over 30 pages ago. This didn't have to happen, but it did, and we're here now. He killed Scarbrand. He's a goddamn hero. Everybody praises his name, and that guy, who I didn't even mention his name, is perfect, and I'm sure he's going to end up in Total War Warhammer. No, he's not, because Thankful literally walks out from behind the statue and says, No, he's not the hero. I'm the hero. He blasts the remnants of the Dwarven statue's arm with warp lightning, sending this dwarf plummeting to his death. A main named character just plummets to his death because Thankful didn't like that people were cheering for him. And then all the dwarves are like, what the hell? And Thankful just middle fingers him and does his teleport spell to get away. And that's the end of the book. It's so good. It's so good. Ah. Oh. You have to read it. You have to. It's so good. And if you listen to all this, you're like, but you spoiled everything. I literally just touched on the main plot points. Like, 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 there's so much in between. There's characters I didn't even mention their real names. I barely went into any of the human subplots. There's, there's 200 pages of the, the, the Eshin book, the second one, the Temple of the Serpent, where I just said a King Kong happens. There's 200 pages in there, and it's all great. It's all glorious, okay? You got the barest outline. If you're like, yeah, I don't want to read this almost a thousand page book because at the end I know Scarbrand shows up for 15 whole pages, then you're wasting your fucking time because clearly you can't appreciate life for the little moments. It's the little moments, my friends. Just because you, oh, hey, sweetheart, let's go on a vacation to fucking Disneyland. No, I don't want to go to Disneyland because I know when we get there, it's Disneyland. Knowing where you're going isn't the trip. The trip is everything in between, and everything in between is incredible, and stupid, and dumb, and it's my favorite thing. Goodbye. Rawr. Subscribe, yes, yes.